When we think of a silent assassin, what's the first thing you think of? For many, it's the shinobi of Japan, but as I've said many times on this channel, the historical shinobi were more spies than they were assassins. But what if I told you there was an order of assassins in history? An order that most of us have failed to notice is, much like the shinobi, it's been masked under a fair degree of pop culture. And what if I told you that we see hints of that order in For Honor's Peacekeeper? Well, let's dive in. Welcome back to Heroes in History, where I take a look at each hero in For Honor and talk about what inspired them and who they actually were in history. Last time we talked about the Lawbringer, and frankly, that wasn't too difficult to do. But now everyone wants me to talk about Peacekeeper, and if I'm being honest, she's a bit more tough to get into. Peacekeepers were not an official or known order in history. There were no knightly orders built around assassination, and there weren't any female-only orders either. The Peacekeepers, as a woman's assassin group, is almost entirely fictional. Note that I said almost. As I said, there is an order that she's based off of, but to look at it more closely, we need to go to another Ubisoft game one that most of you are probably very familiar with because you've asked me to discuss it on this channel. Assassin's Creed. Now I'm going to leave aside all the sequels to the original game. I'm only going to focus on the original because that tells the story of a fictional order of assassins who fight against disorder and chaos caused by the Templar Knights and the Crusades in general. You play as Altair and work to end the lives of evil men who plot the destruction and control of the entire world. And all this is historical fiction, right? Well, yeah, a lot of it is historical fiction, and it's fantasy, but the Order of Assassins? Not necessarily. The Assassins were a real order, and you probably never knew it because, well, again, it's shrouded in a lot of pop culture. We like to look at that and say there's no way people like this existed, but they did. Now, is this, assa now, this Assassin's Order, is this what inspired the Peacekeepers? Well, let's take a look back at 11th century Persia and find out. We're going to talk about who were the first peacekeepers. The word assassins, or Hashashin as they were also called, were an Ismali sect of Shia Islam. The founder of the assassins was an Azari Ismali missionary called Hassani Sabah, who infiltrated a castle at Almut with his followers and bloodlessly ousted the resident king of Dailam in 1090. Hassan e Sabah was a Sunni Muslim, and Persia at the time was held by the Seljuk Turks, who were Shiite. Some of you who have followed my Crusader series so far will know exactly who the Seljuks are and probably know why this is a big deal. What you also need to know is that many sects and schools of Islam did not get along, and it's the same with the Sunni and the Shiite. Using his new stronghold, Sabah and his followers began capturing more territories and strongholds, including the legendary fortress of Masyaf, as it's featured in the Assassin's Creed game, so that they could begin waging an internal war with their enemies, the Seljuks. To kill their targets, the assassins would infiltrate the cities or castles of their intended victims and plan out an attack, often going so far as to infiltrate the staff or attendants of their victims. They preferred killing with blades or daggers, choosing to avoid arrows or poison, which is what led to Assassin's Creed developing the hidden blade as the primary weapon of the creed. Many of the assassins were Islamic and were promised access to paradise in exchange for martyrdom, which meant that they had little to fear from being captured or killed after the fact. However, only damnation awaited them if they failed. This meant that they could afford to be merciless, sudden, and very efficient. This led to a common practice for nobles and leaders in Persia to wear chainmail or scaled shirts under their clothes just in case. The Seljuks came to fear the assassins, and much like the ninja in history, the assassins became a shadowy fear that grew into a legend around Arabia. Now, while the term assassin typically refers to the entire sect, only a group of disciples known as the Fadai actually engaged in conflict. Lacking their own army, the Nazari relied on these warriors to carry out espionage and assassinations of key enemy figures. Over the course of nearly 300 years, they killed hundreds of Seljuk and Fatimid rulers, including three caliphs, a ruler of Jerusalem, and many other Muslim and Christian leaders. The first incident of murder in the effort to establish a Nazari Ismali state in Persia was that of Seljuk vizier Nizam al Mulk in 1092. Other notable victims of the assassins include Jana al Dawa in 1103 and Fatmid vizier al Afdal Shanhanashan in 1121, and various other non Sunni leaders. The most famous leader of the assassins was one Rashid ad Din Sinan, or more commonly known by his nickname in Assassin's Creed, al Muhalim. He was a legendary figure and commanded absolute obedience in his followers. Legend has it that a crusade count came to Masyaf to show off his army to Muhalim to prove his army was superior. In response, Al-Muhalim said that the superior army is the one that will perform any action obediently. 
To prove this, he ordered three of his assassins to jump off of the roof of the fortress. And if he hadn't guessed, this is how Assassin's Creed came up with the leap of faith. Show this fool knight what it is to have no fear. Go to God! Muhalim's greatest enemy, however, was Salah Adin himself, who escaped assassination twice in 1175 through 1176. Saladin actually laid siege to Masi after trying to dislodge the assassins, but after Al Muhalim snuck into the camp and left a note by his bed warning him to get the F out, Saladin instead made a truce with them. It's not that he liked the assassins, far from it, but he couldn't risk Richard the Lionheart forming an alliance with them too, because he knew that would be very unfortunate. The Assassins and Crusaders didn't meet often during their time together, in fact there were times they worked together, but there were certain Crusader leaders the Assassins did target. The first Frank known to have been killed by the Assassins was Raymond II, Count of Tripoli in 1152, and in the time of the Crusader States they would lose the de facto King of Jerusalem, Conrad of Montref Montferrat in 1192, and Philip of Montfort of Tyre in 1270, to name a few. The assassins were eventually defeated and vanquished in 1275 when the Mongols invaded Persia. There were several causes as to, the, to why this downfall came to be. The first was that they had tried to form a truce with the Mongols, but at the same time the Mongols caught them sneaking spies and hidden agents into their administration, which led to immediate distrust. Not only that, but the assassins were falling into a state of infighting, and their last leader was not the most competent. In time, Monk Khan, the grandson of Genghis, grew to distrust the assassins and knew he'd have to get rid of them, which he eventually did. There's so much more we could talk about with this order, and if I ever do a video on the series of Assassin's Creed, which I will surely do, I will gladly go into more about them. But, we're not here to talk about Assassin's Creed, we're here to talk about Peacekeeper. So, what are the differences and similarities between the Peacekeeper and the Hashashin? Let's start by pointing out the obvious. Peacekeeper is not Hashashin in every aspect. For one thing, she's a knight. The Hashashin were most definitely not knights. They were an Islamic order founded well before the Crusades. Peacekeeper is certainly not Muslim. I believe her origins and oaths could be taken as far back to the Christian oaths and codes of chivalry a knight would take. For example, consider the oaths taken by priests and bishops in confessionals. They're sworn to similar oaths of silence and secrecy that they cannot break, not even under threat of perjury. But do they have anything more in common? Well, let's talk about the weapon of choice. The Hashashin preferred to use daggers as their main weapons. Peacekeepers certainly do carry a dagger and a short sword, but more than that, observe how she fights. Peacekeeper often use their short sword for heavy attack purposes and deflections, but she always uses a dagger to get in her bleed damage or sneak attacks. She relies heavily on it to add damage to what she's already done. But then there's also her trailer. There are three parts of the trailer I want to look over specifically. When wars end, it is the silent blade that keeps the peace. But when wars rage, a peacekeeper's work is never done. This implies that peacekeepers are active in both war and peacetime, which is consistent with the Hashashin. They were assassins who struck at any political or economic opponent regardless of what wartime situation of the region looked like. These assassins killed to maintain order, or at least their order. Selected from the desperate the humbled or the devoted. Again, there's a slight nod here to the Hashashin. Many who joined the Hashashin were either devoted to the cause or just desperate enough to follow the ways of the assassin for, for life. Or maybe they wanted to fix the wrongs they felt at the hands of their enemies. Although, and to be fair, this is likely more something created for the peacekeeper as characters. In medieval Europe, women often didn't lead successful or happy lives, and thus many could be considered desperate or humbled. Perhaps this was meant to make the peacekeepers look more like the kind of women who had trained themselves to become dealers of death and abandon any weakness or reservations they might have felt. Sworn to secrecy by unbreakable oaths, what they know can destroy legends. Or... Create them. I like this line in particular because when you realize the Peacekeepers were inspired by the Hashashin and they themselves were the inspirations for the hit video game series Assassin's Creed, it's true. The Hashashin did create legends. If every Assassin's Creed game all ties back to that first order found in Persia, built by a group of zealous warriors intent on changing the world, then yes, they did build legends by their mere existence. And destroy legends? Obviously. It was said that the Muslims and Crusaders alike feared the Hashashin. Salahuddin himself was nearly assassinated by them on at least two occasions, and 
Richard the Lionheart was even a supposed target at one point, though, granted, history does not record him encountering any assassins. Obviously, there are more pop culture-like things, such as The Hood, which is probably more associated with the Assassin's Creed games than anything else. And I'll also point out that some of her emotes and signatures look like court jester-style actions, which fit her overall look, but could also be a nod to how assassins would infiltrate the staff or administration of their targets. Maybe, like Amberly Vale of the Inquisition, peacekeepers are trained to adopt disguises, such as a jester or prostitute, or maybe even a maidservant. If one thing is clear, though, the Peacekeepers might not be the Hashishin of history, but they certainly embody the legend of what the Assassins were. Hell, I'd go so far as to say their origins are more Assassin than those of the Shinobi. <laughs> Pretty sure I pissed off some Gaijin Gooba fans with that one. But I think we can end it there. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode of Heroes in History, and I hope you'll join me for the next one. Who should I take a look at next time, guys? So far, I've gotten a few requests to do Warden and one to do the Conqueror. So what would y'all like? Let me know what you would like in the next comment section. Leave a like if you enjoyed, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in my next video. Take care, everybody.